So welcoming to the Harvard stage for the Symposium for Integrated Health, Dr. Melissa Paul. At 40, I had achieved everything I'd ever dreamed. I had a medical degree and three board certifications, teaching and leadership positions. I was voted by my peers to the nation's best doctors list. I had good health, a husband, five, yes, five amazing children, family, friends, parish council presidency, a beautiful home, nice cars, a retirement fund. I was miserable. I got up at 5.30 every morning to get the kids off to school, get myself ready for work, and get us all out the door. The kids packed homemade lunches because good nutrition was my priority. My priority for them, that is. In reality, I was lucky if I could scarf a protein bar down in the car on the way to work. From there, every moment was spent trying to control the chaos. Patients scheduled in 15-minute appointments, often late, some with 10 or more complaints. I felt like I just couldn't win. It is not possible to be present, to address questions and concerns, to meet quality metrics, productivity standards, all while staying on time. So I cheated the clock. I drank very little water so I wouldn't have to use the bathroom. Lunch was mindlessly swallowing simple foods in five minutes while I signed prescriptions reviewed labs, and answered questions. At the end of the day, I was hungry, I was thirsty, and I was exhausted. But my day didn't stop there. It was time to pick up the kids, help with homework, chauffeur to sports practices, music lessons, play dates, then eat dinner and start the bedtime routine. Next came hours of closing patient charts before falling into bed, exhausted, asleep before my head even hit the pillow. I could not believe this was what my life had become. This is not at all what I wanted. Here I had achieved everything I'd ever dreamed, yet I was really struggling. I wasn't depressed, but I was definitely miserable. Even the fun stuff felt like work. When one of my kids would get invited to a birthday party, I'd look at him and I'd say, oh, how wonderful. And on the inside, I'd be thinking, crap. Now I need to RSVP, drive to the store, buy a gift, wrap it, drop him off at a party, only to pick him up two hours later. It was yet another thing on my calendar and several other things on my to-do list. Does this feel familiar? I looked to medical science for answers, but didn't find them. I looked to parenting groups and books for answers, but didn't find them. And one of the things I've learned is that when I want a better answer, I need to ask a better question. So I asked myself, what if life doesn't have to be this way? What if I am not meant to wake up run like a crazy woman all day, drop into bed exhausted, and then get, it, get up to do it again the next day? What if I could instead tap into who I was created to be? What would then become possible? The cure for exhaustion isn't rest. It's wholeheartedness, also known as alignment. At first, I couldn't put my finger on the cause of my problems, and I knew that without identifying a cause, I wouldn't be able to find a solution. I was deeply connected to the pain that I was experiencing, but I was completely mystified as to what in the world had gone wrong. I kept wondering, how did I get here? Have you ever asked yourself that question? I was determined to find an answer. And here's what I found. The dynamic between mind, body, and spirit is sort of like a three-sided teeter-totter. When they're out of balance, 
you come crashing to the ground. I had developed my relationship with my mind through study and education. That relationship was very strong. My mind was my go-to for all problem solving, all decision making. My relationship with my body was weaker. Now I'm not talking physical weakness. There were times I worked out a lot and was in pretty good shape. I'm talking about the relationship. In my relationship with my body, I was that terrible friend. The one who never texts or calls back. The one who never asks how you're doing. The one who blows you off for more important things. I didn't even pay attention to my own basic needs, eating, drinking, sleeping, using the bathroom. Honestly, I kind of saw my body as a vehicle to carry my brain around. Gosh, it hurts to even say that. And my relationship with my spirit was even weaker. Sure, I went to church, I loved God, but did I see God in me? No. Did I know who I was? No. Did I care? No. Saying that hurts even worse. You see, I had all these gifts inside of me that I wasn't using. In fact, I found them to be bothersome. As a child, I had the ability to feel what other people were feeling. If you had a headache, I had a headache. If your left knee hurt, my left knee hurt. If you were anxious, I was anxious. When I got to medical school, it was all too overwhelming. I was around sick people and their worried loved ones all day long. I just couldn't handle it, so I shut it off. There was also a fire inside of me that I was hiding. Here I was, the little girl who wanted to change the world, now all grown up, hiding in my very comfortable life. I didn't want to rub people the wrong way. I didn't want to be vulnerable. I didn't want to be visible. I didn't want to feel like things were out of my control. Perfectionism made me a great doctor. But the truth was, I just couldn't bear to fail. I chose invisibility and silenced my voice while longing to be seen and heard. I refused to even see and hear myself because that would require me acknowledging that I was hiding my gifts, intuition being only one. From a spirit standpoint, I had completely abandoned myself. I was out of alignment. My mind, body, and spirit were totally out of balance. And I lost all connection to who I was, what I was here to do, my passion, my purpose, my why. Yet my soul continued to ask, continued to ask me to stand up and be the woman that I was created to be, to be myself, to live my unique why. At the time, I couldn't say yes to my soul's impulses because I couldn't even hear the question. There was too much dissonance, too much internal noise. That noise leeches essential life energy. We begin by creating harmony. Then we say yes, that creates alignment. That was what I wanted to quiet the noise, to find harmony. I was determined and on a mission to find it. And just like my medical training taught me the, that all organ systems are interconnected parts of the whole, my exploration of alternative medicine and transformative coaching showed me the interconnection between mind, body, and spirit as the path to alignment. I wanted it. I slowed down. I started to listen. 
to body, to spirit. And as my relationship with these parts of myself changed, my relationship to the external world changed. I uncovered fresh solutions for my patients' struggles, ones that weren't found in traditional medicine. I discovered and aligned with my why, which includes inspiring others to align with theirs. Alignment is divine energy coursing through our bodies. It's where we have complete clarity about who we are and what we're here to do. Alignment is being fully connected to our why, our passion, our calling, our life's purpose. So why does this matter? Because this is the place where we feel joy. We feel peace. We feel love. We feel fully alive, lit up, on fire, and ready to change the world. We are excited to get up each morning because there's so much life to live. We want to contribute. We want to create impact. We are no longer surviving. We are thriving. We are living our why. And in this place of alignment with our why, we are really at peace with who we are. We're comfortable sitting in our own thoughts. We are comfortable sitting without any thoughts. We are comfortable putting off the to-do list for kite flying and trading security for the unknown. We let go of the need to be anything or anyone other than who we are. We cherish our shadows as much as our gifts. In this place, we are love. Alignment with our wife frees us from the turmoil of being out of balance in mind, body, and spirit. It's the place where we can create with ease. Our why becomes fully accessible. It's the place where we can expand time, always having more than enough time for both being and doing. Do you want that kind of freedom? This is what I do. And my team has made it their mission as well. This photo was taken two weeks ago by a man who's living his why. Having given up the day job, the desk job, for the laptop lifestyle, he is constantly expanding knowledge and expertise professionally while being fully present with his wife and four kids, taking time for adventure in the life they've created together. And I'm so glad he's a member of my team. Let me tell you about an amazing woman that I've worked with. Shauna is a brilliant, hilarious, giving woman who's devoted the last few years to finding and living her calling. She's taken personal development and business courses. She's really dedicated herself to the women she serves. But without clarity about her why, Shauna described struggles of feeling overwhelmed by possibilities. She described the myriad of opportunities before her as a mind-blowing maze. She found that she was easily distracted by get-rich-quick ads and marketers, often falling for them hook, line, and sinker. She felt alone. She felt a nervousness and anxiousness about a looming sense of imminent failure. And she had a sense that she was in over her head, like she was an imposter. Ugh. Shauna's words hit me in the chest like a ton of bricks. This amazing, brilliant woman, how, how could she make any forward progress while carrying that weight? So Shauna and I did some Align With Why work together, and here's what we found. Shauna's why is to take a stand for those struggling to find their place in the world, 
so they know their value and embrace their unique gifts. Let me say that again. Shauna's why is to take a stand for those struggling to find their place in the world so they know their value and embrace their unique gifts. Now, how many of you out there think that we need Shauna to stand up and live her why right now in this day and age? I know I sure do. And the truth is, what the world needs right now is for all of us to stand up and live our unique why right now. Now, Shauna and I took this a step for further. We looked at her core essences, her sort of hidden superpowers. These are the ways that she operates in the world that, that allow her to operate from a place of strength and in support of her why. And here's what we found. Shauna's core essences are emotional tenderness, vulnerability, self-responsibility, conscious communication, and service. And when she and I ended that part of the conversation, she expressed an immediate sense of relief that these were actionable ways that she could show up in each and every moment of each and every day in service to her why. We went further and we looked at opportunities to increase alignment of her mind, body, and spirit. And a month later, Shauna sent me this message. She said, I'm traveling lighter, feeling a sense of belonging with my sense of purpose. I'm easily able to determine what is mine to do, walking past everything else without second guessing myself. I'm more comfortable and I'm more relaxed, no longer, no longer wondering what I missed. None of that coulda, shoulda, woulda. I'm feeling a sense of accomplishment at even the smallest task, knowing that I'm doing the right thing at the right time. And she expressed a sense of being comforted, sitting in curiosity, waiting for an answer, rather than just bull rushing ahead. Do you see what becomes possible? So back to my story. In January of 2013, my mind, body, and spirit aligned. I was no longer miserable. I was no longer fighting myself. I was no longer exhausted. I made tough choices, choosing to separate from my then husband, choosing love, health, and well-being for all seven of us. And as I became more present, I started to awaken. I felt that nagging, calling, tugging at me, and I said yes. I became certified in color puncture, then Reiki, then transformative coaching. I wrote books that spoke to the people reaching out to me. I felt my soul's impulses, and I said, yes. The asks became bigger, being vulnerable, becoming more visible, surrendering to the unknown. And each time I said yes, I was filled with this profound sense of deepening alignment. I could actually feel it in my body. Which is why when I woke up on December 8th last year with complete conviction that I was to give three months notice, just three weeks later, my mind, body, and spirit immediately said yes. My soul leapt for joy in that moment. I felt that profound, energetic rush through my body, that delicious combination of nervousness, excitement, and horniness all wrapped into one. <laughs> I consciously anchored that feeling, that unwavering certainty into my body so that I would remember it when fear would undoubtedly set in. That fear of leaving my medical career of 21 years my medical directorship, 
my means of supporting my family. That fear never came. I gave notice on December 29th, and I found my beloved later that day. The last year has been one of wonder. Aligning with my why and saying yes has given me the life of my dreams. Do you see how powerful this is? The clarity that comes from aligning with your why and the grace that follows with saying yes. Aligning with my why is my pathway to peace and clarity in every situation, whether it's from where to spend my time professionally, how to nurture specific relationships, or what to eat for lunch, the answer is always why. I know this to be true. I live it. I quit my freaking job to follow my why. But don't worry. The soul's ask isn't always so big. For me, it had to be because it freed me up to inspire you. Do what you love. Do what makes your heart sing. I love music because it gives us a taste of alignment involving mind, body, heart, and spirit. So I'd like to close today with a song by my friend Barbara, but first I'd like you to feel her words in your heart. May you breathe easy. May your heart be light. May you open your life to each joy, each delight. May you walk with assurance that your way is blessed. May you dwell in the spirit of yes. And for anyone who wants to stand up and just feel that music, if my video plays, we're good.
career because I'll talk about myself. I don't have a life without my career. I live my career. I breathe my career. But I also love my family. So if I were to not have one, I would not be happy with the other one. Um, so balancing the two, I think, is very hard. But if someone can do it, that's where you're, for me, that's where success comes for me. And so what I found easier to do is scheduling in everything that matters for my family into my calendar first. And everything else goes around it. Because you already have it in the calendar, and it's already you know, occupied with something. And as soon as you have that registered in there, you have that time to lock them out. And it's very easy to schedule everybody else and everything else with the open spaces that you have. And yes, it can be balanced. So you know, kudos to you for, for you. doing what you're doing. It's amazing. And uh, Thank you. You know, one of the things that I love about being in service to my why is I get to create that balance. Because part of my why, part of the reason I exist on this earth is to sort of midwife my children into adulthood as well and to spend that time with them and to be a part of those things and they no longer feel like work. Um, it's awesome. Yeah. What are you supposed to do next? You can either contact me directly or you can go to alignwithwhy.com, alignwithwhy.com, um, where you can set up a conversation with me so we can figure out what works best, whether that is one-on-one -on -one work, whether that is my online course that includes some group coaching, but, um, but it services a larger group of people. Um, my mission, my why, is to inspire a million people so they can change the world. Because wouldn't it be flippin' awesome if every single one of us was living our why? It should be a public service announcement. Um, this is what the world needs. So uh, alignwithwhy.com will get you to me. Okay, thank you. Yes. Mindy. Why are you wearing the red sparkly shoes? What do you ah, mean? well. I'm so glad you asked. Aligning with your why is like finding your way home. The answer is always why. Yeah. I'm interested in uh, how you overcame your fear and were able to walk away because fear comes from my perspective in your expectations because we see either our expectations in two lenses, either fear or faith. And I'm interested in knowing how you overcame the fear you had to take the action steps that you did. It's a great question. Thank you. You know, that developed over time. It started, you know, back years ago. I didn't want to be vulnerable. I didn't really want to be visible but I wanted to be seen and heard. There was a whole lot of mixed messaging I was doing with myself. And it, it started by taking steps, doing something that made me vulnerable, telling someone that it really upset me when they said something that they did instead of just kind of blowing it off and making it no big deal by receiving. I was someone who could never receive help for anything. I had to be superwoman. So learning how to receive, facing all of those fears, because those, those were just as big to me in that moment. I used to describe it as feeling like I was falling off a cliff and here I am clutching at the, you know, small trees and the bunches of grass and I'm trying to prevent myself from falling off. And then when I would actually fall, I'd lose control and fall. There's the ground, two feet down, and I didn't get hurt at all. I decided, man, this is a giant waste of time. I'm just gonna jump. So when I hit that place of fear, now I just jump, it's so much faster. But th that, that habit had been established for probably a good year and a half before the ask, before the soul asked me to quit my job. And at the time that that came, I, I really thought that the fear would come. I mean, it's a single parent, five children. <laughs> like, I, I kind of thought that it would be coming, but my soul was just so certain that every cell in my body felt it and there was no fear.
So the pain point was so great that you had the courage to... It wasn't, it, there wasn't even, I wouldn't even say that, it, which I understand um, where you'd be coming from, but there wasn't necessarily a pain point at that time. I loved seeing my patients. I was medical director for three different clinics. There were aspects of my job that I loved. My why was bursting out of me and it was impossible to say no. What type of clients do you have now and how do you find them? They tend to be entrepreneurs in the coaching or the um, sort of more uh, spirit, out of the mind, body, spirit kind of realm. Um, I've had some performers talk to me as well. I think, I think sometimes for them, you know, if they're not aligned with their why, it's easy to produce the wrong album or take the wrong role or that sort of thing. Um, but my heart is really with the entrepreneurs who are going to go do their thing and change the world. Are you working with a one-on-one -on -one or is it all group? One-on-one -on -one and group. Empowering others to align with their why that is what I do. Whether you need that one-on-one -on -one to walk you through it like yesterday, like I need it, or whether you want to take a little more time and digest it in an online course and group coaching setting, I'm here to support you in discovering and aligning with your why. Because the world needs you. <laughs>